How's it going, everyone? This is Mitchell Mander here, and welcome to another review of Pokemon Journeys. Today, we're going to be covering episode 38, which involves Ash, Go, and our Queen Kaharu. She's finally back after being absent for like six or seven episodes. And they went to Pewter City, and they did some digging for fossils. And it was a pretty interesting episode, to say the least. Anyways, before I get on to the review, be sure if you're new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe as I cover this series on a weekly basis or whenever the episodes come out. Anyways, let's get on to that review, shall we? The episode begins at the Soccer Rocky Labs in which uh, Ash and Go and the Professor, they're watching something on TV. It's it's, it's kind of weird because it's like this digital TV that they're watching in the lab. And uh, we, they find out that there's a fossil event going on at the Peter City uh, Museum. And Go wants to go there, obviously, because he wants to capture some fossil Pokemon. And so Ash and Go are going to go to this, but Kaur is over here. She's trying to figure out what she wants to do for her research project for school. In which her father suggests that, hey, why don't you go with Ash and Go? Maybe you'll be able to do something for your research project if you go with them. So, Ash and Go being super excited, they end up dragging Kohara away, which was pretty funny. She's like, yeah, why, why, you, why'd you do this to me, Dad? Why'd you make them do this to me? Seriously? So, they drag Kohara and they all head out to Pewter City. Because Queen, you gotta learn to travel with these two. You're gonna have to do it eventually, so, you know, you did it once. Now here's the second time, you're going just to another city in the Kanto region, so you might want to get used to it. <laughs> Anyways, Ash, Go, and Kaharu, they're in Pewter City now, and Ash and Go, they're super excited. Go wants to capture some Pokemon. Ash wants one too, by the way. He also mentions it in the episode. But he's just excited to be around Pokemon. And Kaharu's just awkwardly over here like, what? Why am I with these two? Why? Seriously, Dad, why'd you do this to me? I don't know, I, I like some of her expressions in the early part of the episode. But they eventually end up going to a fossil exhibit where they can basically dig for fossils. They can take it to the restoration machine and get their own fossil Pokemon. Neat. But Team Rocket is also there. And they're digging for fossils because of course they are. They want to steal some fossil Pokemon. So they want to give it to the boss. But, but anyways, uh, Jesse gets annoyed. She's like, um, why? whose bright idea was it to come out here and do this? This is boring. And Meowth and James are like, uh, you? You're the one that wanted to do this. It wasn't us. It was you. <laughs> but anyways, Ash, Go, and Kaharu show up, and Team Rocket being Team Rocket, they scheme to not only get the fossil Pokemon, but they want to steal Pikachu as well. Anyways, the trio end up running into that one dude from the Unova episode. Turns out he's the president of this uh, Peter City Museum, which is pretty cool. So, nice. I'll, I'll give it that. Good job journeys for the continuity there in your series <laughs> but anyways yes this guy's a pretty interesting character but anyways the three begin digging for fossils and Kohara actually ends up finding a seemingly a fossil it looks like a shell so it looks like it might be a shoulders and she originally wants go to help her out but goes too pre preoccupied he's trying to just get fossil pokemon so he's on his own he brought his goldurk with him to help him out and get fossil pokemon so, Ash ends up helping Kohara, and I have to say, I have to appreciate that, uh, seems like Ash and Go are just getting, or Ash and Go, Ash and Kohara are, have been getting along more as time has gone on. And the day just basically goes by, and it's at the end of the day, the exhibit is pretty much over with, and Ash and Kohara want, you know, to leave, so they're like, hey Go, it's time to leave. And Go's kind of disappointed because the entire day has gone on, he hasn't found a single fossil Pokemon, but then... Right before they leave, he actually spots something and digs out what he thinks is a fossil. But then they take it to the president. It's not a fossil, but it turns out to be old amber, which is, you know, to revive an Aerodactyl, which is awesome. Go is looking forward to that. So they put it in the restoration device and they said it will take until the morning for it to basically revive. So Ash, Go, and Garo head to the Pokemon Center to basically spend the night. Anyways, Team Rocket, they sneak into the museum and they tamper with the restoration device and end up destroying it. And it seemingly actually revives Aerodactyl prematurely or before it should have. As the restoration device is destroyed, it actually alerts Ash, Go, and Kaharu, which they run in the middle of the night back to the museum. They get with the, pr the president and they find out the, mach the machine's destroyed and that the Pokemon escape. So Go goes after it on his own. Y you know, you got some guts, Go, to go by yourself. I'm trying to go up against an Aerodactyl, I'll give you that. Anyways, Kaharu and Ash try to catch up to them, and they actually end up uh, running into Team Rocket, and I thought this scene was pretty funny, where, like, Team Rocket were hiding in this random bush, Pikachu detects them, and Ash is like, stand back, Kaharu, there's somebody here, and he just moves the bush, and 
Bush over, and yep, there's Team Rocket. They go into their motto, and they get their wonderful gotcha machine that we all totally love. We all gotta love that gotcha machine. It's totally not a terrible gimmick for the series. <laughs> but anyways, um, they get a Nidorino and a Graveler, which holds Ash off as Gar goes to find Go. Go, on the other hand, is caught up to Aerodactyl and originally has the reboot fight Aerodactyl and it basically gets taken out immediately. Literally, immediately. He calls it back to his Pokeball for the first time in forever, I think. And then Go takes out Goldurk this time and the tables kind of turn as Goldurk pretty much handles Aerodactyl pretty well. But before we get into that, I just want to mention that I actually did like uh, Ash's brief skirmish with uh, Team Rocket in which uh, it seemed like Pikachu was you know, backed up against the wall, but Ash has Pikachu use Electroweb, and he manages to go through the web as, uh, I, th I think Graveler was doing rollout and it was going after Pikachu. So Pikachu goes through the Electroweb, and uh, Graveler hits the Electroweb, gets shocked, and then it just shoots right back to Team Rocket and ba basically blasts them off, and I thought that was actually pretty clever of Ash. Only Ash would think of something like that to do. So nice job, Ash. But anyways, going back to um, Go versus uh, Aerodactyl, Golurk is actually doing a pretty good job here. And even though Aerodactyl's hitting it with Iron Head, you know, Go eventually hits it with a flash cannon and eventually takes Aerodactyl down. And Aerodactyl's getting back up, and Go does an Ash thing and runs right up to Aerodactyl. Basically talks to, you know, he talks about how this era, you know, is not so bad. And Aerodactyl, even though it's very dangerous and he could have had his hand chopped off here, or bit off, uh, Aerodactyl accepts and Go gets Aerodactyl and probably one of the more satisfying catches for Go. In fact, it might be the best capture besides Score Bunny, in my opinion. This one was really good and Go definitely earned it. You know, yeah, Rebrute got taken out, but he handled it with Golurk and he earned this uh, capture, in my opinion. And Ash catches up and he's very proud of uh, Go over here for catching Aerodactyl. And even Koharu shows that she's actually very happy about it. And the episode comes to an end, they're back at the Sakuraki lab, and they're showing off Aerodactyl, or the pictures of Aerodactyl, to Professor Sakuraki. And Ash and Go had a very good time, and Koharu actually admits she also had a good time. So this makes me wonder, <laughs> if Koharu is actually going to start joining Ash and Go from time to time a little bit more often now, because it seems like she's starting to enjoy their company, and she's starting to get along with more with Ash too, so there's some progress here. We have progress with... Uh, go and his goal here and how he's progressed as a character and we also have Kakara slowly progressing as well she's you know growing co closer to ash and go she's becoming less cold and more interested in the po er, in pokemon in the pokemon world so i wouldn't be surprised if our queen finally starts uh, traveling with ash and go from time to time i could see it happening so overall i thought this episode was pretty decent there were some parts that were kind of boring i will say but overall i thought this was a fine episode it i mean I think the main thing here is that we get, again, we get to see, like with the previous couple of episodes, we get to see Go's growth. Like earlier in the series, Go would have been basically, you know, destroyed by Aerodactyl. Of course, Reboot lost here, type disadvantage, but he handled himself pretty well, and I like this capture. Honestly, I, I'm starting to like his captures a little bit more. I like captures like this better than him just throwing a random Pokeball and just catching Pokemon. Those ones just don't feel as earned. This one feels absolutely earned. When he captured Flygon in the episode the other week, it felt earned. When he captured Cubone, it felt earned. When he captured Score Bunny, it felt earned. This felt earned, and that's what I like. And again, I like the fact that Koharu is growing closer to Ash and Go. And she's starting, it seem, she's seemingly starting to enjoy their company. Sure, she still has her moments like in the beginning of the episode where she seemingly didn't want to go you know, on this trip, but she ended up enjoying it. So this tells me right here that, you know, I can see her joining them, you know, more often. I would like to see her become a little bit more focused on in the future of the Pokemon Journey series. I don't know if she's going to become a main character at all. Like if we go in a year two or three, I don't see that happening, but let's give her some more trips. It'll, you know, make her grow closer to Ash and Go and become a more prominent character in that regard. So yeah, and... I'm, I hope that uh, Go uses Aerodactyl quite a bit in the future. It'd be nice if he uses it in the raid battle against Zapdos, just saying. So that's all I got for this review. So overall, a decent episode. I'd say it's good enough for probably either a 6.5 or a 7 out of 10. So I'd say it's pretty decent to good. So what are your thoughts on this episode? Did you love it? Did you hate it? 
Post your thoughts in the comment section down below. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will talk to you all later. You all stay safe out there and have a good night or day wherever you're at. Peace.